Okay. So be it resolved that the minutes of the regular meeting of April 9th, 2020 be approved as presented and further be it resolved that the agenda of May 7th, 2020 be adopted as circulated. Is there a mover? Move it. Keegan and Ted seconds? No. Yep. And is there any errors or omissions in the minutes? And any additions to the agenda? Uh, the one thing that I did, oh, somebody was saying something? No? Uh, oh, sorry, I, I was on mute. I, I would like us to discuss when we could have our, uh, our hearing that we postponed. Um, we've had a long while to adapt now. Anyways, I'd like that put on the, uh, on the agenda if possible for a discussion. Sure, yeah. And then as well, uh, we had, and I didn't see it, Darcy, you can, if I missed it, just tell me, but the, uh, the four complaints that we had regarding the, uh, the um, patio. Yeah, the patio. Uh, that I sent you as just a separate email because I thought you would want to have a discussion about it first before you put anything formally on the agenda. Oh, okay. Yeah, no problem. Alrighty. No, no other additions? All in favor then, uh, please indicate. Aye. 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 Yep. Aye. Very good, thank you. And we've got committee reports and uh, I'm just gonna start, start at the top of the mic. Greg, uh, you're, you're the first guy on the page here. Okay, uh, haven't been to too many meetings lately. No. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, there's some uh, issues regarding the Winnipeg River Recreation District. Uh, uh, Darcy knows all about this. Maybe we'll talk about that in camera. Yeah. Darcy, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the arena, well, the kitchen's mostly done. They're doing flooring there yet. Exterior doors are coming along. They've got new, the main entrance is done and a couple yeah. of the other doors are done. And uh, I've got financial statements that I didn't send to you, Darcy. Uh, do you have a copy of those for the arena? No, I don't. Okay, I'll send them to you. Okay. Uh, and they got plans. Uh, they're, they're doing flooring in the dressing rooms too and cleaning up and doing all kinds of things. The ice is all out and the floor is all shiny and clean and and uh, they're looking, they've had plans for a while to do timekeeper's box and the players' benches and stuff like that. Wanted to spruce, kind of rebuild them and spruce them up a little bit. So that is still in play. And on the agenda there, we'll be having a discussion about the, uh, the engineering on the foundation, which we'll discuss later. Uh, Two Rivers uh, uh, Senior Resource for Seniors is, uh, of course, they're doing a lot of social distancing and coping with that as best they can, doing a pretty good job of it, I think. Uh, right now, there's uh, apparently there's some grant money maybe is coming available uh, that would help them with, with, their, with their money issues and stuff like that. Uh, so they're working on that, trying to, get to, trying to get some of that money. So they're, they're on it and they're, they're trying, to, uh, trying to get that done. Um, that's about all I've got. All right. The uh, Winnipeg River Rec was the only meeting I actually attended on, well, like on 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 social uh, on distancing on uh, on the monitors. Okay. Uh, but uh, we'll we'll discuss uh, Winnipeg River Rec later. Yeah. Good. Thanks, Greg. Uh, Ted. I haven't got anything other than uh, I got a uh, email from an update from Alana Wilcox at uh, CNL and uh, everything, you know, there's, I think it was 30 odd out of the workers there are on site and uh, everybody's hoping to get back to work. Mm -hmm. And the same with Interlake Eastern Regional Health. <clears throat> we haven't had a regional meeting well, since COVID started and social distancing became the norm. So that's about all I've got. Okay. Oh, and like 
like Greg mentioned, the doors are in, so not sure when they're going to be paid for or uh, finished. And we've got uh, just a little, I think, just a little better than 14000 in the bank for them. So they'll be covered. Good. Do they know that, Ted? The... Who knows? Well, the, the, the arena board, like... Uh... No. No, okay. Yeah, that that would be paid by the by the town. Yeah, oh no, that's fine. I just wondered if they if they if they were aware of that. Yeah, they need to know. Aware that. Of, of which, Greg? Well, Greg? The, the money is available for to to do doors, etc. They're aware of that, I, I think, aren't they? I haven't spoke to anybody. Yeah, uh, Tracy Grimberg is is aware. Yeah, there, there was a private donation fund that was basically set up for the exterior doors of the arena. Um, she knows that that's not coming out of her budget. That's private, uh, private funding uh, that's been donated towards that group. And basically, the transaction and, and the funding and payment thereof will be flowed through our office here. Okay. Brian, could you share your um, I just have the Wildlife Association meeting back on April 22nd. Brian, can, can I just interrupt you? I see Corey has come online. If we could maybe just stop what we're doing and then pick up uh, after, if you don't mind. Yep. Corey, I see that you're there. You'll need to turn your audio and your video on. Lower left hand side. Hi there. Yeah. I can hear I can hear you now. We just can't see you. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Well, welcome. Good to have you Thank here today, you. Uh, Corey, and uh, appreciate your willingness to kind of work through us on this uh, less than convenient system. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I just, uh, we got a couple incidents on the go here, so I, I just uh, got to watch my phone here for a bit, but uh, yeah. if you folks are good here, I'll, uh, I can, uh, I can start there if you like. Sure, go right ahead, yeah. Okay, uh, so anyways, uh, every year there, I, I try and uh, get out to the councils there and not discuss anything. our, our uh, oh. someone, uh, everyone can hear me. Who said they weren't hearing them? Oh. I think that was Brian that said that he can't hear. I don't yeah. know. I'm I'm good. I can hear you, Corey. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm good. I can hear fine. <laughs> you got I just hear static. I can hear fine. Okay, go ahead, Corey. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, and if you can't hear me, let me know. Here is one of the first time I've I've tried this, so uh, yeah. hopefully it all works out and everything. But uh, uh, I try and get out to the councils every year. Uh, our fiscal year starts at April first, and. Uh, we generally generate a new uh, performance plan. Uh, it's part of what I report quarterly to you folks uh, when I, uh, you know, on the activities that our office is doing and some of the initiatives we're taking this year. Um, I was able to get out to most folks and I, I've been in the area for about a year now. So I, I have a pretty good understanding on, uh, on how we're gonna kind of roll out the, going into this next year. Uh, some of it I'm going to carry through. Uh, I think we built a, not a bad plan last year. I think a lot of the visibility stuff, uh, a lot of the concerns about the members out in the community and stuff, I think we've addressed. Uh, but the, the, the three things here that I think we're going to focus on this year is uh, the, the first one is going to be uh, more of an offender management program. I, I think you, uh, you folks all know that we've had a few issues from time to time, and uh, even in Lac de Bonnie. Uh, with certain properties or certain folks that are in the community. So what we're going to do is uh, we'll be between all our detachments here. We're going to generate a few files. We're going to actively monitor them, actively monitor bail conditions or any enforcement conditions if they're going to continue to commit crime here. And, uh, and that way it'll give us an opportunity here to tell them that if they're going to continue their activities in these communities and stuff like that, that we're going to ask them either one to stop doing it, two they're going to be held accountable to it, or three that's best they just leave because they're going to get tired of the police attention. 
And I think we were doing that somewhat already last year with a certain residence within the community. Uh, but I don't think uh, it was being reported to you guys in a way that can be reported a little bit more effectively just to show you that uh, although you may not see the flashing lights or the guns going off or anything that we're actually still there uh, pounding the pavement and still still doing it so that, that that's going to be one of our main priorities I think that will gather a lot of interest within the community. Uh, the second part of it is uh, is I'd like to keep our traffic plan running as is. I want to keep uh, targeting impaired driving. I want to keep targeting unsafe driving, and I still want to keep targeting seasonal equipment operation out in the out in the detachment area. Uh, many of you folks may or may not know we already had a fatality here this uh, past week or two in one of our areas already from an off-road vehicle. I think it's important. The more the most fatalities that we have in our detachment area out of any kind of thing is from vehicle-related collisions, and most of them. Are, are not just simple accidents. Most of them someone's doing wrong, whether it's impaired driving, excess speed, or, or misuse of seasonal equipment. So I, I feel that, that we got to keep focusing on that and keep working that way. And then the last thing I want to touch on there too is that I still want to tell you folks about the community involvement we have, whether it's being in the schools, uh, you know, being out in the community, stuff aside from the general day-to-day -day police work because I think day-to-day -day police work speaks for itself if we get a report of a crime we're going to action it but I think where the visibility piece is somewhat lacking with us is that people will say we're not around we're not involved but often people may not be at some of these events that we're at so I want to keep telling you when we're in the schools I want to keep telling you when we're by the parades I want to keep telling you uh, when we're out doing other stuff so so you folks are aware that we're still out and about and we're still in uh, in these places here so I think those are the three things that I'd like to focus on here this year I think uh, for the most part uh, you know it's just a it's just a little bit more of an enforcement initiative this year with the offender side of things but uh, you know subject to any questions I, I'm pretty much an open book uh, with most folks here about our operations right now I'll tell you the two things that are going to hinder us this year is obviously the COVID uh, concerns out there. Uh, you may have heard that uh, we're not doing criminal record checks right now, unless they're a frontline service. Um, and some of the some of our traffic enforcement has kind of been slowed down or, or tampered down. Not saying that we won't won't deal with anything that's not safe, but it, we're not going to be actively doing check stops at this time and stuff like that until some of this stuff dies down we get a better handle on it uh the other thing is uh, i don't think it's a big surprise I'm, I'm still down a couple of resources on the front lines here um i'm projecting to go down here another one here within a couple months uh it's not that uh people don't want to come here i've actually gotten a lot of phone calls uh and i can get those positions filled lickety split uh but uh, it, it's with our human resources right now and the COVID thing and then actually physically relocating people it might be a little difficult, but I'll report, I'll continue to report those numbers to you guys quarterly so that you folks uh, still uh, still can see where we're sitting on our human resources side. So, uh, you know, subject to that folks, uh, that's pretty much uh, pretty much all I have for you. Uh, you know, I asked for your support on it. Uh, I'll send Darcy a document, uh, hoping that I can gain some support there in a, in a signature again this year moving forward, but subject to any questions there, that's pretty it, pretty much it for me. Sure. Good. Well, thanks, Corey. Anybody got any questions? I don't have any questions. I our uh, cop uh, program is. Uh, I haven't heard too much about it. We've got a couple signs we want to put up, Corey. But uh, with the COVID nineteen, I think the orientation and the training and stuff like that is a little bit held up. So. Um, I yeah, I, on that side there, actually, uh, Arlene from the Clippers reached out here. I'm hoping to get a little thing in there. Uh, I do know Scott Jones there from the RMs. Kind of, he's. Uh, uh, I've seen a few emails start to dabble out about it a bit, uh, even to the point there that if uh, anyone wants to, without being trained right now, because the training, you know, it's common sense. Don't get involved. Just make note of what you see and report suspicious stuff. I, my understanding is that there's some vest and some gear that he's already obtained so that if people want to get started, uh, yeah, the COVID thing has really slowed things down a lot on that. I hope it gets going. I think it'd be a very positive impact for the community. And, you know, it, it gives an opportunity for the folks that, that, you know, kind of sit back and complain. Here's a, here's a community initiative, and it's a great crime prevention initiative. 
that, you know what, here we go, you know, it, uh, you can get involved and, you know, do something for your community. And, and it's really good when those folks are out, especially if they wear the vests and stuff like that, people take notice of that. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, uh, I'm quite willing to wear one around and uh, maybe try to, once we get some of the stuff in place and uh, we can maybe actively, uh, maybe approach a few people, get our numbers up. Yeah, my understanding, I, I believe there was 10 or 11 on the list there at one time, and, and it was kind of our fault there for a while because uh, it was the understanding that a few people needed fingerprints, stuff like that. Uh, we've uh, clarified that. They don't need them anymore. So I think all the background checks have been done on anyone that wants to get involved. So it's just uh, it, it's different times right now, eh? and it's just uh, got to work through it a bit. But I'm really looking forward to it coming around. I think it'll be very positive for the community. Yeah, I, I I got all that done. But that all that got done. Uh, Ch Chantel did a good job of looking after that. Uh, in my case, anyway, seemed to get it done, timely manner. So, uh, Brent, you just want to mention uh, which, where you've got the signs up for the COPP? Oh, well, yeah. we don't have them up yet. Uh, did we you say Greg or Brent? Brent. Uh, we, Brent. We got we got two new ones last week and we put them up. Uh, we put them up. We replaced one of the ones on 502 coming in. Yep. There was an older one there. We swapped it out for a new one. We put one up on Minnewawa just coming into town. And then we took the old one that we put down on and put it on MacArthur coming into town from the south. And there's, and there's one coming in, an older one coming in from the north as well. So there's, so there's signs on all four entrances now. Yeah. Oh, okay. And Corey, just a question from my perspective. Uh, uh, I noticed, oh, I don't know whether it was last week or the week before in the paper, there was just uh, some folks out of Winnipeg that were out here creating mischief. Is is that where a lot of the mischief is coming from, is from out of town? I'll, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll be up front with you. The, the very serious break and enters or those very big property crime events that we have, usually when they go after businesses, such as what happened there last week, are generally traveling criminals. Uh, it, uh, they come out of the city uh, because the city is so congested with police, they come out here to the rural area. Uh, unfortunately, rural properties aren't quite as secured as they are in the cities and they, and they create a lot of grief. Uh, the minor, the petty stuff, uh, generally comes from these flop houses and, and little, uh, you know, little drug houses and stuff that pop up from time to time in communities. So, uh, the, the, I, I, we've yet to tag anything that's been major to anyone local. It's always been usually from the city of Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. uh, even there might be some loose ties back once upon a time, but uh, it's 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 generally folks from outside or from inside Winnipeg. In fact, most of this property was located at, at a residence there where they are not a residence of another commercial business in the city where they stash it. So. Uh, it was some good work on Winnipeg Police Service, some kind of intertwined stuff there between our uh, our new uh, district uh, enforcement team and the communication they have back and forth just saying, hey, listen, this is what we got. Kind of put the word out internally and, mm -hmm. uh, and WPS picked it up, seen something suspicious and ran with it and, and it actually turned out to be successful. So, Good, good. Yes, it's just, uh, you know, I mean, I, I don't like crime from outside the community, but uh, it's uh, it's better than coming from within. I guess we'll put it that way, you know, when it's, yeah. when it's significant. You know. Yeah, yeah. In the, the background of that one, too, is that there was a stolen vehicle that was involved from Roland, Manitoba. So they, it's not like they're just, they just target this area. They're from all over the place. Uh, it started out in Roland and moved back into the city and then it moved out this way. So, uh, you know, they, uh, it's not that they're just targeting us because we're easy pickings. They're just targeting anywhere outside the city. Right. Yeah. Good. Any other questions for Corey? Good. Well, thank you. Corey. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thanks, Corey. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Thank you folks. And uh, per usual, there, uh, you know, feel free to get a hold of me anytime. Any questions, I don't mind taking them. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna quickly touch it while I got you folks very quickly here. Uh, uh, we got a we got a Facebook page here that uh, that circulates amongst the community and stuff like that. Uh, I'm sure most of you folks are aware of it. Um, uh, 
I'm just gonna I'm just gonna comment just a quick little bit about it here. Uh, I'm aware of it. I, I'm on Facebook, but I'm not on the page myself. So I, I'm aware of what's being said on there from time to time. Uh, there's some stuff going on there right now, which I don't think is necessarily the truth about some people that are there in town. Um, and I, I've often have heard stuff coming from that site that I know for a fact that isn't true. So I just put the caution out there that you know what uh, you know generally where there's smoke, there's fire. Uh, on those sort of things, but just uh, take everything that you read on those pages with a with a grain of salt. There, um, uh, there's there's definitely always two sides to every story, and there's uh, and it may not be. I, I can see a lot of people like using stuff like that to get people excited and and everything else. But uh, uh, you know, if you ever see something like that, feel free to reach out to me. I don't mind telling you folks what's going on, at least from our standpoint. Or what we're seeing out there. So I would rather you hear it from me than than some uh, some loose comments from a social media site or something like that so sure. good appreciate that thank All you right. well, thanks so much uh, then uh cory and uh we'll uh look forward to seeing you on the road <laughs> excellent thank you folks have a good day yeah you just have to click the leave the meeting button down on the right hand side there cory and then you'll be gone excellent this actually worked out a lot smoother than what I thought it would. So, yeah. thank you very much. All right, take care. Bye bye. All right, bye bye. Bye. Okay, Brian, uh, are you hearing? Yeah, I can hear you. I just didn't hear Corey at all through the whole thing there. Oh, really? Okay, because he was he was certainly plenty loud. Uh, I did not hear a single word other than some noise fuzz. Really? And yep. you're hearing the rest of us though? Everyone else is clear, loud and clear. That's interesting. Okay. Technology uh, at its finest. Yeah. Okay, Brian, if you'd go back to your report there or start. Uh, I just had one meeting, which was the Wildlife Association on April 22nd. Okay. And Keegan. Uh, the community center has stopped meeting in person. We've been doing everything issue by issue. I guess the big thing that's happened down there recently is that they are pursuing that federal uh, wage subsidy to try and keep staff on. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't seen yet, though, if they've uh, succeeded in applying for that. But that's, that's all I have for you. Okay. Good. And I think I only had one thing uh, on this month. And um, I can't find it in my calendar what date it was, but uh, oh, I'm in the wrong month, that's why. Yeah, it was on April 22nd. Uh, uh, we had a, uh, a call with the FCM, and I think I sent out an email on that one that uh, uh, it just shared uh, about the request that the FCM was making on behalf of all the municipalities for support from the federal government. And uh, uh, just for the fun of it, not in great faith, but it, just for the fun of it, I did the calculation of what it should look like for our community should it come through. And it looked like about $278,000, no, $87,000. Uh, but I was reading something today that uh, basically said that Trudeau was just sitting on his hands on everything relating to those requests. So uh, I wouldn't hold my breath for that money, Darcy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> good. Okay, Darcy, what do you got? Um, not a whole lot of anything. I've got April 15th, I had a conference call with Crozier, Kilgore, and Mears regarding the arena, which I believe you were in on the call, were you not, Gordon? And so was Brent. That was just basically with regards to the scope of the work that we wanted for the details uh, for the proposal regarding our repairs to the structure to be done. <clears throat> May 4th was a conference call with Agassi uh, Week Control District meeting. Um, they're just basically gearing up for the season and getting prepared to um, start spraying for, for weeds. We'll keep an eye on the forecast and the rain gauges. Um, if our siding is required, then larva siding will take place if needed. Um, although from what I understand from Farmer's Almanac this year, it's going to be another hot, dry season. So 
we may very well switch uh, the funding that we normally provide to for market siding over to uh, the other uh, weed controls that we seem to be having a bit of an issue with. And of course, um, we did town council meeting tonight via Zoom. That's all I have. All right. Just out of curiosity, uh, were the rest of you having trouble understanding Darcy? Or was that just me? There, oh. there was a moment or two there, things went a little digital, but I was able to get all of it. Okay. The sound, the sound's a little wacky from my end, but partially because we're almost in the same room, maybe. I don't know. Uh-huh. Hmm. Okay. There's a couple of buzz coming out of through her mic there. I don't know whether whether in her office, whether it's uh, you know, something is bouncing off, the, her voice is bouncing off the walls or what's happening there, but it's... Uh, it sounds uh, very echoey. Yeah. 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 Darcy? It's this old laptop. <laughs> Get what? a new one. <laughs> I can't. There's none available. <laughs> I, I guess Darcy can't hear me, can you? Oh, yeah, we can hear you. I didn't hear that. Oh, oh, sorry. Have we heard anything from Water Services Board on the meter application? That was paid. Oh, we got it already. Well, yeah. I told you that two meetings ago, Ted. No. They paid us $83,000 and change. Oh, okay. <laughs> In fact, you were keeping track, Ted. <laughs> so did no, I. I told you that long time ago. I sent a big email and it was yip yip hooray, and you didn't make a sound. <laughs> Too busy playing with that new tractor of his. I know. Usually, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's all over anything that says water. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh. Brent, uh, what do you got for us? uh streets we've uh we we swept the uh the streets over the last couple of weekends the last couple of friday nights we did basically the north half of the town the first week and then the south half the second week which my understanding is we don't typically do as much on the south half but we used a fair bit of sand over the winter this year so um other than that i mean we're keeping up we're kind of doing some some patching here and there there's a couple of spots like mcintosh and some sections on fifth that we've kind of stopped patching with asphalt and we're using gravel just because the condition of them is kind of deteriorated enough that it's just really no no point doing doing asphalt patching they they would uh, i think it'd be a first on the list if we come to go and repave something somewhere down the line um sidewalks really nothing major going on there's there's a bit of a hole in the one at the inlet on third street that we should be addressing within the next couple of weeks now that hopefully the frost is mostly out of there almost out of the ground uh parks we've got all the playgrounds now open and and everything all the uh snow fencing and everything off and we've got signage on every one of them um, we'll be bringing, we're looking to bring in a couple loads of sand in on the beach and fish fixing. There's a bit of a washout in the corner that we're, we, we need to fix up. Um, there was, I don't know if everybody heard, I know a couple of you I'm sure did, there was a bit of a small fire on the town dock last week. Um, we had to do a, a, a small repair. I think they, it, it looks fine. It's, it doesn't need to be super long term, I think, but we kind of patched up the one area. So. Cut out, cut out a bit of a burnt section. It's uh, all over Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the comments are pretty entertaining, but uh, hard to believe the cops don't find the Facebook useful. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the lagoon. I think we're still scheduled to pump the uh, pump the lagoon next week, and and I think that's still on. Uh, sewers, we flushed, uh, flushed the sewers last week. We did uh, basically the whole north side of town. I think everything went well, didn't hear there's no issues. We may have a, uh, a damaged private sewer on, on a house on Macintosh. We're kind of, we're working on investigating that. There was a small hole appeared on the shoulder of the road that I mean, mud doesn't just accidentally disappear. So I think there may be, I think they may have a small hole in their sewer close to the, close to the main. So we're we're working on that. Um, water, there's no real issues. I think the uh, 
I think there was an ex inspection at the treatment plant today. I think they, they had stopped things for quite a while, but I think they're, they're started back up. So I think they, they were out at the plant today for most of the day. Uh, pump stations, generators were all serviced, I believe last week, uh, annual service. So everything I think is up and running well there. Um, arena, I get some arena stuff, but we can talk about that later with the, uh, I think it's on the agenda further on. So, yeah. Any questions, comments, concerns? Anybody? Nope. No. Uh, Brent, that, uh, that third street, uh, issue there where the sidewalk is, is, uh, caving in there. Yep. That, that's a catch base in there. I don't know if you're aware of that, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm, I'm pretty sure there's, uh, I think there's got to be a hole on the top of it or a side of it somewhere that uh, that it need it needs to be patched because the the dirt is obviously, you know, kind of running in the running in the backside there and causing a void under the sidewalk. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good. Good. Good job, Brent. Anybody else questions? All right, let's move on to uh, seven, uh, seven one, and uh, we've got. Well, if it'll open, I've got something here. It's coming slowly. Okay, the letter uh, from the Association for Community Living, uh, you've seen it there. They're basically indicating that uh, request for $500 uh, for a grant on behalf of uh, the community. And we have one person from town here that is a part of, the, of that program. So uh, uh, if somebody, Darcy, have you got that resolution open? Mine's not opening tonight. Yep. I do. Read it, please. Uh, where is the Association for Community Living Bossier, uh Adult Day Program has requested a municipal grant in the amount of $500 to assist with the needs of a participating resident in the town of Lactabani. Therefore, be it resolved that town of Lactabani agrees to provide financial support of $500 from the 2020 budget. Is there I'll a mover? For that? I'll move it. Sorry, I missed two seconds. Brian? Oh, Brian, sorry. Yep, and yep. Greg seconds. Yep. All right, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's carried. This is something we've been doing for quite a few years. Yeah. Yep. Next one is uh, Black Dabani Senior. Senior School. And... Um, This is regards to the graduation, and they're asking if they can put some banners up. And we don't have a lot of specifics on that. Uh, Darcy or, or Brent, do you have any more specifics than this or not? No, this is the first I've seen of it. Okay. Um, from, they had actually, the school had actually contacted Connie, and basically what they'd like to do is they have banners made with all the graduates' names and what they'd like to do is post them up um, around the Legion and in recognition of all the hard work that the kids have, have done and you know so to help celebrate their success in graduation unfortunately with the current COVID situation they're not going to be able to um, you know have a graduation ceremony as the rest of us have been able to uh, you know, participate in over the years um, so this is just kind of one way of celebration that the community gets to celebrate and wish them well and, and many successes and the job well done. Whereas due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this year graduates class will not have a celebration until later date. Whereas the school would like to recognize the graduates by way of displaying banners in town and whereas they are asking for the town's permission as well as assistance. Note, note that Brent. <laughs> hanging uh -huh. these banners. Therefore, be it resolved that council does hereby approve the Lactabani Senior School to hang banners for the graduates 
and further be resolved, the council does hereby instruct Public Works Manager to work with the school to display the banners. Is there a mover? I'll move. I'll second. Moves and seconded by, uh, that's Greg and seconded by Keegan. Mm -hmm. And uh, any discussion? I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I, I think they're, they're, they're pretty, uh, they're pretty crushed out this year. I mean, not being able to have their, their little uh, right. ceremony there and, and uh, celebration. Uh, yeah. I think we could try and do everything we can to, to uh, help them um, be recognized in their efforts. Yeah. All in favor then please indicate. Aye. 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 That is carried. Uh, Waterside, oops. Mm -hmm. Waterside Wireless, uh, they've just given us some further information on the antenna that they're wanting to put up on the uh, tower at the... Uh, Fire Hall. Yeah. There we go, finally. Uh, well, we've got the email on from March the 23rd from the previous time, and then you've seen the additional information, which I can't open right now. Uh, <laughs> is there any uh, any issue with that on, for anybody? I mean, obviously the town and the fire or the ERM uh, will need to approve it as well. So, yeah, I think we should uh, uh, try our best to uh, improve, uh, make our communication situation in the town of Lactabani is as good as possible yeah we're in the area it's uh, uh, even even more so now with this COVID-19 thing I mean here we are uh, yeah. it's, it's important to have that service what will the range on this addition to the uh, fire tower mean well, this is this is just for Waterside Wireless uh, addition to it. Yeah. I, I don't know what that range includes. Uh, okay, uh, Darcy, did you get any information like that? Because I didn't. I don't see that in either of the communications. No. Or what was the question? Oh, just uh, Ted was asking what range uh, coverage range that would have. Um, it, they didn't state what the range was. Um, what they did give was the download and upload speeds and limited data for as long as Watershed Wireless can utilize the new tower for their internet equipment. Yeah, I, I think it's really opening the door for them to have coverage all over town uh, with their uh, with their wireless system. I think uh, that's really the key thing because we got they've got other people that are walking in and competing against them, and and uh, I think that's really what it's about. Does someone be prepared to move that we would we would agree to this? Keegan? I'll move. Seconder? Brian? Second. Yep. Brian seconded that. Oh. Um, you you're stuck, Brian. Your hand's still up in the air. <laughs> there you go. Sorry, who, who moved it? Uh, Keegan I moved, did. I moved it. Keegan? Okay. Yep. Brian. You got it there, Darcy? Yeah, give me one sec. Uh, Any discussion? All in favor, then please indicate your favor. Aye. Aye. That is carried. So let me know when you're ready to carry on, Darcy. Whereas the Lactabani Bursary Donation Program is requested. Well, that wasn't an okay to continue. Hold on. What's that? Sorry, hold on. That wasn't an okay to continue. Just hold on a sec. Okay, yep. Is that like a Chakai, Darcy? <laughs> that was the Chakai. <laughs> I bust that out at the rec center sometimes, and boy, are the kids confused. <laughs> <laughs> okay, shoot. 
Okay, the next one says, whereas the Lactam anniversary donation program is requesting support in assisting graduates in the post-secondary education, therefore be it resolved the council is hereby approved donating a hundred and I'm sorry, a thousand dollar anniversary. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't get a <laughs> hundred, eh? Well, that was just a hundred dollars. I, I, I moved I, up to a thousand. You uh, were going fast enough to get the thousand in there too. <laughs> well, it is a thousand. <laughs> to yeah. a graduating student whom we will pursue post-secondary education in municipal government, business administration, accounting, medical field, water and wastewater trades. The only thing that I would say here, Darcy, is is on the preamble, uh, the there is a bursary committee in town as well. And yeah. we don't want to confuse it with that. Uh, so I would maybe suggest... Uh, not using the terminology bursary donation program, but just the uh, the uh, uh, no, no, no. Huh, the word is gone for me. Uh, scholarship? What, what's that? Scholarship. Scholarship to the uh, high school, one of the high school students. Yeah. From the town of Lactabani. Yes, from the town, not not the bursary committee. Okay, and is there any discussion? Did we get a mover and seconder, by the way? Not yet. Okay. I'll uh, move. Yeah, it's, it's done, I guess. I, I missed that. Or <laughs> uh, any uh, discussion? All in favor, then please indicate your favor. Aye. 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 That's everybody. It's carried. Okay, uh, we've got a, a little broader scope on our arena engineering work, and we'll get Brent to just explain that in a minute. Whereas the Town Council approved Resolution 2020-064 on March 11th for Crozer, Kilgore, and partners to prepare construction documents for the structural repair of the Lactabony Arena for 6000 Whereas the original scope of work had been changed and to add in preparation for the front end contract document for $1,200, tendering, bid review, prepare recommendations for $1,200 in the design and detail hinge floor assembly for $1,500. Therefore, be it resolved that the council approves the change in the additional scope of work for $3,900 and further be it resolved that the council approves the total tendering package for $9,900 plus taxes for Crozer, Kilgore, and partners. And if we can get a mover and a seconder, we'll ask Brett just to Ned, seconder. I'll move our second. Keegan. Yeah. Brent, if you just want to explain the additional items there. Sure. Yeah, when when I when I went over their original scope and their original document, they had basically bid on, I think, just doing the design and the drawings. And providing some some specifications, but not actually doing the tendering portion of it. So so the extra is is a request for for them for pricing to do the to do the full front end of the tendering, like producing the tender documents, putting it out to tender, collecting the bids, reviewing the bids, making a recommendation to us, and then as well doing uh, <clears throat> in in going to the arena a couple of times and talking to the guys and seeing what's what's in place there, there's some plywood boxes at the at the west end of the arena that are kind of wedged in or supported in place partially by a two by four that bolted to the grade beam and then sitting on top of the that that basically cover the cooling line trench at the far end. So considering we were going to be replacing the grade beam, it, it just made sense to to get something better in place there and a little more permanent and, and uh, like a detailed, basically a, a hinged floor assembly that would go in sections that would bolt directly to the grade beam and cover that trench and they could lift it up and, and keep it in place and it would be significantly easier to deal with and, and more permanent and a significant upgrade over these plywood boxes that are in place now. So that was, that was the, the $1,500 addition and the, like I said, the other two were, were providing tender documents and doing the tender process itself. Right. And, and looking at looking at their, their pricing, their pricing, in, in my opinion, is extremely reasonable. 
Okay. And, and so those, those uh, covers would be hinged then on one side or the other against the wall probably, and yep. just be able to flip up against the wall then. Yeah, exactly. They would, they would hinge, like bolt them or fasten them to the, to the grade beam and then have a, you know, six inch, eight inch section or whatever, and then hinge so they can lean them up against the wall right. and keep them in place and, and put out of the way to work on the, uh, on the piping underneath. Good, good. Any other questions or comments, discussion? Well, that's good. It's good we get that that fixed up because uh, uh, the, the uh, soil, the earth is coming in there the way it is right now, and it's it's uh, it swells up there, and when it freezes in the winter time, and we we don't want to bust that header pipe because that'll be an expensive problem. Yeah, and and the and the plywood boxes they've got, like moving them in and out, is is a bit of a schmozzle and kind of a it's it's a it's an undertaking and ordeal to do it and, and one of our guys actually slipped and, and fell into the trench and, and hurt his knee a little bit the other day when we were taking them out so it's it, the, the system is i mean it, it worked for what they needed cheaply but it, it's definitely not ideal right yeah no, i thought it was a good idea when i saw it yeah. no further discussion then all in favor please indicate Aye. Aye. That is carried. Thank you. Um, articles of amendment. Uh, this is the resolution regarding the CDC and and uh, should be the final final step in dealing with the CDC matter. It makes the changes that we have to be in on that discussion. So we needed to pass a resolution to to uh, cover that off. And uh, our resolution here is, whereas council does hereby approve the attached resolution to amend the articles of incorporation. Is there a mover for that? I'll move. Keegan, seconder? Yeah, I'll move, or second, I mean. Greg? Yeah. And you've all had opportunity to read that uh, larger document? Yeah. Okay. I, I guess so. Uh, that's the direction we we already set direction on that, so I guess we just carry on. Yeah. All in favor, then please indicate. Aye. 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 That is carried. Thank you. Hopefully, that'll put that out of our hair. Counts for approval for the period ending May 7, 20, uh, have been reviewed by council. Therefore, be it resolved that the following payments be hereby approved. Checks uh, 11778 to 11877, $264,333.48, general operating fund ending April 30th. Yeah. Checks 808 to 902, 24,329, 37 cents. Utility operating fund ending April 30th. EFT, $5,781. Public Works payroll, March 13th. EFT, 3964.12. Admin payroll, March 13th. EFT, 6446.02. Public Works payroll, March 27th. EFT, 5295. 52 cents admin payroll March 27. EFT $7,220.61 public works payroll April 9th. EFT $28.67.48 admin payroll April 9th. EFT $8,946.03 public works payroll April 24. EFT $3,891.78 admin payroll April 24. And EFT $1,248.08 Public Works Payroll May 1st, EFT $4,054.54 uh, Council March Indemnities. Total amounts of all payment listed inclusive, $338,478.03. And then the year to date, general accounts payable, $602, $602,529.06. Utility payable fifty two thousand three hundred seventy one thirteen. Public works payroll fifty eight thousand four hundred and forty three dollars and seventy one cents. 
admin payroll, 36,794 and 67 cents. Council indemnities, $11,556 and 90 cents. Total for 2020, 762,695 and 47 cents. Is there a mover? Move it. Uh, Ted and Keegan seconds. Is mm -hmm. there any discussion? Questions? All in favor then, please indicate. Aye. Aye. That is carried. Opposed? I don't know if I heard everybody. Okay, must have. Aye. Alrighty. So the union, it's that time of the year when the union contract increases, annual <coughs> May 15th. Whereas employees are entitled to an annual cost of living allowance increase effective May 15th. Darcy, I think that should say 2020. Yep, sorry about that. Yep. And whereas the cost of living for 2020 has been est established at 2.2%, therefore be it resolved the town of Lactabonia hereby approves salary increases to the unionized staff of 2.2% effective May 15th, 2020. Is there a mover for that? Move. Keegan, seconder. Yeah, Greg. Greg, any discussion, questions? This is kind of the routine thing of the yeah. cost of living on the annual basis to just maintain the contract as agreed to. So. Yield the deal. Yeah. All in favor, please indicate. Aye. 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 That is carried. We've got the monthly financial statements for January through April. And uh, be it resolved, the council does hereby approve the financial statements of January, February, March, April as reported. And uh, Darcy, maybe we should include the term in there, the draft statements, because these these will, the bank or the, uh, the balance sheets will adjust once the once the auditor's finished his work from last year, right? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe just add that word in there and, and I think we, where did you want me to put it? Uh council will hereby approve the draft financial ah. statements. Okay. Is there a mover? I Ed Keegan. Okay, any questions on those statements? As, as I just mentioned, all of the balance sheets uh, uh, will probably adjust some degree or other as we make the year end adjustments internally from the, once the auditor has finished his work. But this gives us the income expense side of it and you can see what's been happening for the first four months of the year. Any comments, Darcy? Uh, I've been in regular contact with Lance. He's still working on stuff. Um, I have to say that <laughs> he's been quite in depth in comparison to the previous fellow who was our auditor. Um, he's been asking for copious amounts of copies of checks and invoices, and um, we've been providing them. I know there's still a list that he sent, and unfortunately, I haven't been able to get to it. I'm hoping to get to it early next week finish off what he's going to be needing. But I'll check with him first to see if he does and still in fact need all those particular items. Um, he was out in our office with uh, an assistant at the beginning of March. Um, I would have assumed that he would have <clears throat> taken copies of or made note of any and all information that he would require for the audit. But um, I guess he came across other things that he was wondering as this is his first time in, in doing our books for us. Um, so we'll see what, what turns up. Yeah. Good, thank you. Yeah. All in favor then please indicate. Aye. 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 Uh, that is carried. Um, My next one's not opening for me. If uh... can we actually come back to the food bank 
there's another discussion with regards to this particular letter and the request uh, from another party that I'd like to have a discussion sure. first in camera and then we can come back to this when we're out of camera, if you don't mind. Yep. I can't even get this empty shell out of the way now. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if I quit clicking, it may help. <laughs> Okay. Um, so the tax levy bylaw is there. And do we need to wait with this till we have those further discussions, Darcy? No, we can go ahead with the first reading because um, we can make adjustments all the way up to the third reading. Sure. Okay. Be resolved that bylaw 1720 being a bylaw to establish the mill rates for the town of Lactibani be hereby given first reading. Is there a mover for that? I'll move. I move. Keegan, I heard first. Uh, Greg, uh, will second? Yep. That's fine. Yeah. Yep. And uh, <laughs> the financial plan is there, but we need to have some other discussion before we, before we approve that. But, uh, so this is just first reading here. Any questions, comments? I just have a question. I, I really don't understand why fiscal services is, was last year budgeted a million, comes at 349,000, and then we're budgeting a million point one again. Why is such a big difference each each year? That's on expenditures on the, on the, on the third page there. Darcy, do you want to comment on that? Yep. That was page three, Brian. Yeah, I, I assume that's just the accounting thing. That's how it's accounted for some reason, but it just looks like such a big difference because the same thing as next year's budget at 350 again. Well, you're asking about the, the fiscal services, correct? Yeah, like Anyone that sees that is going to be wondering why there's such a big disparity between the, the budget, the actuals, and then budget again, and then next year's prediction. The reason for this is because of page 13, which basically there, this page um, on page five is transfer to capital. So in essence, the 975,000 that you're seeing here on page five, page five is basically a link that brings it forward onto the expenditure side from capital. And what this is, Brian, is the 850000 that we are expecting for the DOC. Oh, okay. So that then shows up in fiscal services. Yeah. It, it does, yes. Yeah. Um, because out of the 975000 that's listed, we've got 850000 um, that we are receiving the direct funding from the Crown for. Um, but we've also allocated 25000 for uh, sidewalk repairs. That'll basically be out of our operating funds. And then um, there's been previous talk about those two waterfront lots for the 100000 which uh, for the time being, I haven't borne out of just the, the general operating fund, not out of any sort of reserve. So the link on the Born by General Funds on this expenditure page for capital links back to page five, which is why you see the 975. But it's the 850 um, that's throwing a wrench into the works that makes it look like it's grossly overinflated, which it isn't. Um, yeah, and, but that's and of course, and of course, that's what we budget last year. We never spent the money because uh, things didn't it, work through. So the result was well, we didn't was receive lower. the money last year. We were still working our way through yes. contracts and paperwork. So yeah, that that's the reason why. Yeah, and, and no, I just like want to understand that because I, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be looking at that and be kind of scratching their heads. Yeah. So. And because we okay. took it out of reserves, Brian, or we were going to take it out of reserves last year, uh, we're not raising that money a second time. It's only being yeah. raised once and it's coming out of reserves, just didn't come last year. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? 
I, I guess what I would like you to do is, is take a good look at that last page, the capital for the next five years. Uh, we need to kind of think that through a little more uh, and make sure that we're covering things off. I'll, I'll have some further input on the water and wastewater reserves, uh, funds for the reserves on that uh, just a little later when I get finished with the uh, uh, the um, uh, waste or the uh, water water rate study. Yeah. So, all right. If there's no nothing else, then uh, we've moved and oh, I would I would assume over the length of these debentures, we must have paid an extra what couple million dollars <laughs> over the last what twenty years. Uh, hundred. What we've paid a lot. I'm just talking about. <laughs> The interest on those debentures, it must be, what, a couple million dollars by now? Or at least a million plus, right? Two and a half. Over two and a half. Over two and a half million dollars extra? That's a yeah. lot of streets we, that's a lot of streets we could pave. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You're absolutely right. That's why I, I, we try to do things cash. That's that's flabbergasting. That's that's just that's just unbelievable. You know? yeah. it's expensive oh. to be poor. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, all in favor then of the resolution? Aye. 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 Heard everybody there. It's all approved. And. Be resolved the council does now adjourn the regular order of business to sit as a committee of the whole in camera and all discussion shall be kept in confidence. Mover? I move. Keegan and Ted. All in favor, please indicate. Aye. Aye. That's carried. <coughs> Did you turn off your recording, Gordon? What's that? Did you turn off your recording? No, I've got to do that yet. <laughs>